On this edition of The Pipeline, we take a look at how the Service Authority is doing its part to help boost the health of the Chesapeake Bay. We peer into a sewer pipelining project that is cutting treatment costs. We get a look at a new water tank that offers more water and less attention. And we reveal this year's winners of our annual Water R Invitational. Hi, and welcome to The Pipeline, the video newsletter of the Prince William County Service Authority. I'm Keenan Howell. And I'm Melissa Hopkins. Today we're on the banks of the Occoquan River. This river, among others in the Mid-Atlantic region, are all a part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Well, unfortunately, the health of the Chesapeake Bay is threatened by pollution, primarily from agricultural runoff, but to a lesser extent treated wastewater. The Service Authority is planning a large-scale upgrade of the H.L. Mooney Water Reclamation Facility. This project will allow us to do our part to protect one of our best national treasures, as well as helping an expanding population. The Service Authority is about to embark on an estimated $150 million upgrade of its H.L. Mooney Water Reclamation Facility. The first phase of the upgrade will reduce the amount of nitrogen discharged from the plant. That's what's currently required of us as well as all the other Northern Virginia treatment plants that discharge the bodies of water that go into the bay. Uh, we've got a project going on right now that will take us from 8 milligrams per liter of nitrogen down to 3 milligrams per liter as well as expanding our capacity from 18 million gallons per day to 24 million gallons per day. Reduction to three parts per million will dramatically reduce the amount of nitrogen that reaches the Chesapeake Bay. The Virginia Department of Environmental Quality will begin enforcing this level for water discharge from the treatment plant beginning January 1, 2011. Excessive amounts of nitrogen has been known to spark expansive algae blooms in the Chesapeake Bay that can harm aquatic species and plant life. Expansion of the Mooney facility will help ensure our customers receive continued quality service while allowing us to continue to protect the environment and the Chesapeake Bay. Other upgrades to the facility and the equipment will be accomplished in the second phase of the expansion, concluding the project in 2012. We move now to the greater Manassas area of the county, where leaky sewer pipes are beginning to see a silver lining. Upgrades to sewer pipes are vital to a well-operating water reclamation system, but they also result in a better value to customers. Two issues that can dramatically affect the cost of wastewater treatment are inflow and infiltration, or I&I. &I. &I. Inflow results from improperly connected storm water drains that flow directly into sewer pipes. Infiltration occurs when water from the ground surrounding sewer pipes actually seeps into the wastewater lines. This latter culprit increases the amount of water that finds its way to water reclamation facilities and can result in much higher than necessary treatment costs. To address this challenge, the service authority is lining the inside of pipes that connect houses to the sewer mains with a new material that is quickly becoming the industry standard. Heat is applied to cure the felt-like material and bond it to the pipe, which blocks water leaks and keeps flow to the treatment facility at manageable levels. So far we're definitely satisfied with the project. We've completed roughly 450 homes and we are definitely seeing a decrease in the amount of water infiltrating the system. The multi-stage five-year project is in year two of implementation and is currently focused on lining pipes in the Flat Branch area of the county. It's not every day that you hear of a water tank being called a site for sore eyes. But for Service Authority customers who live in Dumfries, a brand new water storage tank is a real stunner. This tank's time is up. Situated off Dumfries Road, it was demolished in mid-April and the new Forest Park tank has taken its place. There are several advantages to the new tank, however the most significant being that the service authority will eventually be able to discontinue purchasing a portion of its drinking water from another supplier. In the next several months we'll add booster pumps at this site, which will allow us to supply water from our own system to our customers rather than buying additional water from an outside source. This should result in annual savings of about $100,000 for the authority. The authority considered several sites for the new tank, but the location just off of Route 234 next to the National Park Service land was eventually chosen for reasons including aesthetics, technical and economic requirements, and minimized impacts to the community. Some prominent political figures championed the new location. There was reluctance because of the, uh, the National Park Service and Park Authority, and any time you do something like that and it's a large tower people aren't going to, if it's not in your backyard, you certainly don't want to see it near there. So I think there was just uncertainty. Once people began to look at it, it made a lot of sense. We're saving water ratepayers money. Uh, we're getting greater capacity at this point, 
and for people just driving by and everything else, we did not uh, add more visual pollution to the 234 quarter. It was a win environmentally, it was a win for water, it was a win for the county, and it was good for the citizens. Construction on the tank began in April 2005 and was completed last January. The new tank stands more than 100 feet high and has an approximate diameter of 100 feet around the bowl. The Service Authority recently helped the town of Quantico flush out its water delivery system. Service Authority employees are also teaching the town's maintenance supervisor to conduct tests to better monitor water quality parameters themselves on a regular basis. We're taking what we've learned and trying to convey it to a, uh, a town that is uh, limited with staff, but it is a smaller town and doesn't have a lot of the, uh, the requirements, the needs that we have at the greater volume than what we typically work with. There's no doubt that water and art have enjoyed a long relationship. But the service authority goes an extra step in encouraging young people in Prince William County to continue rendering that connection through a variety of artistic endeavors. That's right. The service authority recently held its fifth annual Water Art Invitational, where high school students from across the county compete in four art categories and what drinking water means to them. Students compete for cash prizes, and we were not lacking for unique and interesting entries. The Service Authority interviewed some of this year's winners about what inspired their works of art. Well, when I was little and I used to be playing outside, I used to like want to like drink water and I was thirsty and I was too excited to go all the way inside and get a glass of water. So I just turned on the water hose and started drinking from the water hose. I really wanted to stay away from water bottles and faucets and a lot of things that I typically saw the other times I had tried to or at least visited the exhibit like to come see what everybody else did. So I went to the idea of first just having water and nothing else holding it, and then it just kind of slowly developed from there. I had been working for a while coming up with an idea, and I just wanted to do something, I don't know, just the spilled water, just I've always wanted to do something with that, um, just because I wanted to try and just work with how the formation of the water would come out once it was spilled. The students also spoke about how their teachers inspired them. The teachers have been doing it longer than us, and they know what the judges want, and yeah. It's a big help. I think it does a great deal to have this contest because students become aware of all types of water, also of all types of ways of treating water because they have to go out there and they have to sort of research the subject in order to do some type of poster. So I see them going to these sites and I think they become much more aware of water, water conservation, cleanliness of water and what it takes to really get drinking water. It gives them kind of exposure to the outside world. It kind of gets their stuff out there. They're able to show it off and kind of get a little pride back just rather than just the teachers like saying, good job. It's, it's kind of a public, you know, exposure for them later in their life. I would recommend doing it because um, as it proved in this situation, as a first year teacher and as an art one teacher, I had a student that was really successful with their piece. And um, it's worth it. It's worth it to see them succeed in that area and really be proud of what they're doing. The next Water Art Invitational will likely draw even more submissions as awareness and appreciation for the contest grows. Those students did a great job. Well, that's a wrap on this edition of the Service Authority Pipeline. I'm Keenan Hell. And I'm Melissa Hopkins. We look forward to you joining us again soon for another episode of The Pipeline, where you can discover the many ways we serve you every day.